bird's mouth joint looks like this. Got one piece that comes in that's square cut. Okay. Then the other side comes in at 45 degrees like that. And it's got a little notch right in there. And that's what holds it all together. And they make cutters nowadays that cut that. It used to be you had to set it up on a table saw, cut this, flip it over, come back and cut that. So you got one side that's your assembling is square cut, and the other side has got the, uh, the bird's mouth in it. And, it's, and this is for an octagonal, this particular design is for an octagonal cut, so that's, uh, what, 135 degrees? Mm -hmm. okay. And you cut all your pieces, and they just fit right together. And put a band on, band them right up, put a band clamp on. I wish I would brought one with me. The reason, uh, we, when I was up at our mid-year meeting uh, three or four years ago was at Winter Tour up in Maryland. I get confused. It's either in Maryland or New Jersey. It's like all run together up there. But anyway, Winter Tour was the DuPont home, and we got to tour it. Kind of self, had a guided tour with the guy that ran the place. And, and all the rooms, this place is huge. Got all kinds of really nice furniture. And... Uh, in every one of the rooms, there were these little decorative boxes, all of them, big ones, little ones. And uh, I was interested in making them, and there were a lot of octagonal boxes. And I, I wondered how they made those. And so there were, in one room, there was an octagonal box there, and I asked him, the curator, if I could pick it up and show you. So I picked it up and turned it over to see how the joint came out. And I, as soon as I saw it, I said, that's a bird's mouth joint. I can do that. And then I found out they made a rider bit to cut it. Once you get it set up, you set up on your uh, on your rat table, man. You can knock those things out in no time. So the other side of this, what I have bird's mouth going on. So you got a square bird's mouth, bird's mouth square, and it all just fits right together. And that was for an eight-sided box. They also make a cutter for a twelve-sided, and you can use this one, I think, for a sixteen-sided box. Uh, Cooper's use them. And uh, all of the router bit companies sell them. They're, they're, they're readily available. How wide a piece of wood can you use on a router that you did? Uh, it's about the smallest you can use is about 9 sixteenths, half 9 sixteenths. I tried some 3 eighths. That's a little too thin, but half 9 sixteenths works, works well. 5 eighths works good. I wish I'd brought one of those wheels up work. But you don't need a spline on these. I'm already a little Oh, really? Nice. Oh, there's enough surface area? Yeah, there is. I, I probably didn't draw this as well as I should have. This, this bird mouth actually comes back further than that. More like that. So you got, you got a significant amount of blue joint, blue surface right here. It keeps the corners straight when you sand it. I'm sorry. Keeps it everything from sliding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It up. Yeah, you do. Um, you make a box. Once you get all the sides cut, cut a groove for the bottom to go in. Put the bottom in. Then put the sides together. That keeps it from flopping around. And I and I make it as a solid box with the top on it and the bottom in it, and then cut it off. That's the best way to do it. Well, somewhere here I have a box with nothing but. When you try to get organized, this is what happens. Ah, there it is. I don't need this anymore. These are corner fans. They can have almost any number of uh, rays in them. That's the one I use on document boxes right there. Here's one I just knocked together yesterday afternoon. So, uh, day four yesterday afternoon. 
I start out with a piece, piece of plywood, or piece of scrap wood with a, lay out a 90 degree line on there. And then you just turn what kind of, how big you want your corn pan. I don't even know about this big. So, the compass. We're gonna make this one a little smaller. We're gonna make this one a little smaller. Make this big. Draw like an arc. And take the dividers. And divide it evenly. All right, do that. Take a pencil, extend those lines. Now you're ready to cut. Now we won't. We've already turned the sand shader off, but it, imagine the sand still being on. This is going to be one of the leaves of the fan. Short piece of veneer, more than long enough to make that. I will take this to the sand, char both sides of it, this edge and this edge. So assume that those are done that way. Then I take I should have shared those while we had that sand on so you could see it. But you saw how that works. You just stick it down in the sand until you get a color on it, get some color on it. Uh, hand me that brass hammer right there. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that back there. Thank you. So we have a we have a uh, shaded side on this, which we want to go to the inside. So I line it up across the inside and take this plain blade. I got it longer than I needed to, right there. Take the plain blade. Line that up, put it on that point. Yep. And there's the first one. The other one has shading on the other side, so line it up here. Cut to this line. Can't get another one out of this, so we go to another one. Here. Sand shaded, sand shaded on both sides. Line it up. No, these things you don't worry about grain orientation. No, no. <clears throat> the grain is radiating out. Sticky paper that I hit. Is that a hot plane? Uh, yes, it is. I pulled it out of my uh, number six plane just because I couldn't find another one. I love those hot plates. Really like them. Oh, let's see, we're going to need a scalpel. They're just very high quality. I mean, I don't know that there's anything he does that other people don't do, but uh, hmm. but his blades are, are reasonable for the quality. I mean, you can buy a blade and a chip blade for 80 bucks. 
got that done, we're going to take our compass, compass back out. If you call top coordinates, chances are you don't have to do that. Yeah. And he's, if you print him on Facebook, then. Go. That lays it out. Get a chisel with the right sweep to it that matches that line. Yeah, you do, you do, yeah. So there, there it is. And then we're gonna we're gonna scallop each one of those. I got the arc right. And now I use another gouge to cut the scallop. You can put it on, you can make a fan just like that without any scallops on it. But we're gonna scallop this one. So I've got a, a chisel that happens to cut the right scallop between these points. It'll just fit in there, like that right there. Yeah, it's not very good. There's that. And now we want to make a skull to go inside there, so we take the black one here the same thickness yes. and take this gouge that we just cut that with. And I'm going to cut that to one way. I'm going to take my cut and cut that to one way. fits right in there. We don't need all that, so we'll cut that off. Somebody pick up that hot one. Oh, there it is right there. <laughs> I saw it jump, but that's what it did. Yeah. 
No, that is not the corner off one of those fan blades. on that veneer is not the best thing to do because it will split. It'd be better just to rock it off, I think. Okay, watch it. Okay. They make a cutter for um Binding and purfling that goes in a drill press. Oh, really? And you just put it down in. Oh, I have one of those. Yes, yeah, chisel blade, actually. Yeah, chisel yeah. Blade. Uh, I, I have one of those. It works great. It, it pulls it, pushes it down just as straight as it can be. I'll try this one. We don't care. This is way sharper. There you go. That's what we're going to do. I don't need it. Or do you pull the good one off? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. shoot, I thought I pulled the bad one off. Okay. Well, that one broke. Bad. You almost put my foot out there. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta remember y'all had wooden floors. There you go. 525. So do you make up a bunch of these at one time? Oh, yeah. you're making them? Yeah. Once you get started on them, they can go pretty quick. Shaded. And then I would uh, put the near tape over this side, put it off, and, and, and lay it that way. You black it too? Oh, you can. I don't usually. These, these don't make you don't have to do that. Let's take this apart and see what it looks like. It's probably dry enough to do what we want to do. But all you need is some, uh, you know, two different colors of veneer. Like these. Make these little corn fans. And you can make them with any number of, of veins. And this one has four, you can make them six, eight, whatever you want to make them. Just have them if you step off with your dividers. Okay. I don't think these little rubber feet on here work really, really well. Well, 
let's see what we got. Yeah. Good. Yep. Did all right. Now I'm gonna sand this. And I'm gonna put my dust catcher on it. What I'm trying to do is get that down flat. Okay, so that's there. Is this a piece of it? Oh, that was a that's a throwaway piece. That's okay. part of the pattern. Some weird fist to lock on it. I don't understand. Looks like she just goes straight in there.
because we had that thing sticking up high, some of the black, see that? Creep, crept up under there. so thick yeah got the black stuff up under there but here's what I want you to see see how these lines yeah that's, see how that right. lines are? that's what you're after right there yeah. this and this were two separate yes yeah, those are two separate so pieces. you cut this out you cut yes yeah. up in there same over here you cut all the way up in back right. out turn back out but you can see how it like this mm -hmm. I only made the shield before I came Anyway, that, that gives you an idea how it works, and that black stuff, you do it right, looks like this. Yeah. If you didn't have the black stuff in there, yeah, you, wouldn't you wouldn't see that. This looks good over here. Mm -hmm. I like it around the, the borders, too. Yeah, it looks good. Now, when I make the eye, make a triangular cut. Just carving. Yeah, you know, and just put a little of that black stuff in there. Uh -huh. like the eye. And if you want to make it a little longer in the back, you can put a little more extended in the back there just a little bit. Like that. I have taken a little drill, a little hand drill. Mm -hmm. right? And then take a little hand drill, make a divot, and then make a little line at the back. Like that. And then put some of that black stuff in there. It looks like an eye. Sorry, I didn't get that right for you, but you, I think you see what I was trying to do. Oh, yeah. So that's a wasted and then, hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> then you would inlay the whole thing. And yeah, cut then I inlay that. We're gonna, we're gonna do the next step now. Okay. And the next step is cut around this. We need a scroll saw again and cut around this. And we'll put the banding on it. 